Today, we'll learn how to dig around a macOS computer to find interesting files and even go through the user's bash history on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. In our second piece on situational awareness attacks written by Tokyo Neon, we're going to go into starting to profile what exactly the user can do and what we can find in the system. What we're going to be looking for is various types of files which might be interesting using built-in commands in macOS so that we can start digging into what is actually located on this computer we happen to have access to. Now, in order to follow along, you'll need to have access to a macOS computer. And if you get confused, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. Once you have a macOS computer set up and ready to go, then we can begin. To learn more about what's going on on this macOS computer, we're going to refer to a guide that's written by Tokyo Neon, and I encourage you guys to follow him on Twitter because he has a lot of great articles just like this. Now, if we jump into the Nullbyte article, you can see that some of the first commands we're going to be use, using are the find command. And this is really important because there's a lot of different ways we can use this excellent command to go through the file system and identify files of interest. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this example and we'll use it to base our first couple commands. So here, I'm going to go ahead and search for a specific type of file. And we'll need to modify this because, of course, you don't know exactly what username you're going to be dealing with. So in this case, I'm going to replace this with ready a team. And if I run it, I can see that in the downloads folder, I'm actually not finding anything with a PDF file format. But if I modify this to be, let's say, a pages document, I can see in the downloads file, there's nothing. Let's try maybe the documents folder. Oops. And there we go. We've located a file of interest. It could be something very interesting. Uh, and that means that we have the ability to start looking for specific types of files throughout the file system and even start to go into files that have been modified within a set period of time. Now, if I wanted to do that, the way we would do it is to basically run the find command again, but we're going to omit a little bit of it and I'll show you where. So we'll go all the way up to about right here where we have the username and then we'll type tac M -M -I -N, and then tac5. Now what this is showing us is files that the user has modified within the last five minutes. And this could be really useful if we want to know what that person has been up to or maybe the most recently modified things. Now another thing we can do is actually set ranges of time. So if we want to change this, we can actually roll this back to just ETC. And then we can set the M time to from plus one. And then M time to 60. So what this means is that we're looking for files that have been created or modified between one and 60 days. So this is kind of a way we can begin to set up a uh, kind of filter and find the files that were accessed within a reasonable amount of time. Now, if I go into the example here, you can see what this command looks like. Okay, I was a little worried I got it wrong, but nope, that is right. And this is the way that we can set time periods to maybe go back and find out what that person was doing. So let's say we find an interesting entry and we want to know what that person was up to. Well, we can also check out the history. And if that person uses the command line, we should be able to see what they were most recently up to. Now here you can see that, uh, oh, well, that's me. <laughs> We're looking in a mirror. All right. Well, if we go back, we can also see that, oh, before that, 
we can see that somebody was setting up SSH on this computer in order for us to do this demo. So this is a way for us to go back and see the various commands that have been run in terminal. And also we can see if maybe the person's on to us, if they've logged into interest, any interesting services. Here we can see a login name. So this would give us the ability to, for example, begin brute forcing this service that maybe that person has logged into before. Now we don't need to just stick to one user. We can also look for this on basically anywhere by running another command that says, uh, let's see, find, and then just slash type, tack F for file, type tack I for I name, which is in name. And then we're going to look for a string, anything that ends with bash underscore history. We'll add exec cat, which is gonna execute cat. And then opening and closing curly braces, and then backslash and semicolon. Uh, I should probably just copy this. Let's go back here, because this one's a little bit long. And there we go. So I'm going to have to run this as sudo because all of these are denying me permission, but we're basically looking for any sort of bash history so we can start identifying where we might be able. Oh, here we go. Now it's, now it's found something and it's dumping. So a lot of these files uh, basically weren't able to be searched because permission was denied, but the ones that we were actually able to access did give us the ability to dump some of the last commands. Now, this is a great way of kind of looking around and trying to discover if there's any other users on the system. Because if you are the only one on the system, that's great, but it might not be that simple. And there might be a list of other people that you might be able to log into accounts of as well. So finally, we're gonna take a look at USB. And this could be any number of devices that are plugged in. We might be able to find, for example, a vulnerable hard drive or a network service device or something else we can get used to get in a little further. So in order to do this, we'll type diskutil list And this will give us a list of all the various uh, USB interfaces that are connected to this computer. And we'll be able to see if anything's mounted, uh, maybe there's a USB stick plugged in, maybe a hard drive, and uh, basically anything else we might be able to begin accessing to determine whether or not this is interesting information or it can contain something that we might be able to exploit. Now finally, we'll dip back to our first article where we talked about system profiler. And we'll type system underscore profiler. And then SP USB data type. So looks like there isn't any SP USB data type. And let me go ahead and copy this just to make sure. So system underscore profiler SP USB data type. There we go. Okay. So just going over the command SP USB capital D data capital T type. So when you run this, you should see all the various things that are connected. You can see uh, the FaceTime camera, uh, headset, all this other great stuff, the keyboard. And this will give us information, for example, if they have something plugged in, the manufacturer, and any other things that we might be able to start doing with, let's say, the Realtek Semiconductor Corp card, or any of the other great stuff that we found plugged into this device. And that's a brief rundown on the way that we can use built-in tools to begin profiling for interesting files and interesting devices connected to this computer. Using these built-in macOS tools, it's easy to go digging around for files on a computer you happen to find yourself with access to. Make sure to check out Tokyo Neon's Nullbyte article linked in the description, and it's also our 100th episode. So thank you to everyone who helped support me, this channel, and enlarging this big, beautiful angel, because we appreciate you and we do this because we love it. Check out the article in the description. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Cody Kinsey and send me ideas for future episodes. We'll see you next time.